think this was around 2012. My friend, Bob Challenger, and I have been on cosmic adventures that were really, really amazing um, car, car rides through California and uh, we went to uh, Mackinac Island, uh, had a really fantastic experience. We also went to the Georgian Bay where his family has a, a cottage for you know, his whole life. He told me about the stone object called the Irikaniandi, which is like a, a, a great manitou, a PowerPoint of an, an animal image of stone. It's considered a great PowerPoint and it's considered the array of the Thunderbird. So I was, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll go. And uh, for me, it was, you know, a quest to find the Thunderbird. You know, is the Thunderbird real? Let's find out. And on the way, we stopped at a museum of an Indian village that, where they built a longhouse. When we got there, by the, you know, we probably spent 20, 30 minutes looking around. It was locked up. So we could access it, but we weren't able to go through the longhouse. Well, a thunderstorm rose up, you know, and uh, I, you know, I knew immediately. I said, you know, look at this, the Thunderbird. You know, this is the this is the climate, the environment of the Thunderbird. You know, we've come to this old Native American site, and the Thunderbird lets us know, you know, it's aware of us. We're in the territory. Then we went on to his place on the Georgian Bay near the Blue Mountains where there is this um, museum park where the Native American, I think Huron Tobacco Clan lived, uh, I think for 10,000 years, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where the Blue Mountain, I believe it's if I'm not mistaken, it's Onondaga Flint, but whatever it is, these rocks peel away from the mountains and created these deep passageways where the Native Americans, like, you know, lived, lived in caves and under ledges. And it's incredible. Like, like, you know, you could fall 100 feet or more, I think, on some of these things. So you're up above and you're taking metal stairs down to the bottom. But the natives were, you know, this was like sacred land. And I believe this is where a medicine man um, lived, and when people died, he would remove their brains there so that when they were reborn, they didn't remember where they came from. Well, when we were up above, there was a, something called table, table rock or powwow rock, where you had to like walk across a metal bridge, and the information tells us that this was powwow point where uh, if there was any conflicts going on the ambassadors had to go out on this rock and they would remove the the plank and they'd have to like settle things out there and eventually smoke the peace pipe and it's about 50 or 100 feet away from Irhaniandi which is this big conglomerate pillar rock where the thunderbird allegedly lives the morning that we were going, it was rainy and electrical, and I said, uh, so, uh, you know, here we are on the quest of the Thunderbird. And when I said it, <laughs> the thunder rumbled, you know, we <laughs> were like, yes. We get to the table rock, and we're out on the table rock looking across, and I say, so that's Irikaniandi, right? And when I say that, out of a blue sky, thunder. <laughs> there it is, man. The Thunderbird is real. The Thunderbird knew I was there hunting for it, and it answered the question, is that the array of the Thunderbird, boom, out of this blue thunder rumble. <laughs> now scientifically we can talk about, you know, what's going on here is the cold waters off the Great Lakes are hitting the Blue Mountains, which is creating this updraft, which is creating this adiabatic phenomenon of weather that can just, you know, move and change rapidly. And the 
uh, ions being pulled off the mountain, feeding electrical charges in the atmosphere, right? Just boom! So uh, geography gives rise to the Thunderbird, but the Thunderbird, the electromagnetic field, gives rise to nature's intelligence, which is, you know, a lot older than we are. <laughs> We're the new kids on the block here. <laughs>